Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball machine repair video for you today. We are going to start a new series on this super sweet Bally Captain Fantastic pinball machine and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy, which was an Elton John album. Um, we had somebody bring us this. They've had it for a while and they wanted us to fix it up for them, so we're going to fix it up. So, I figured we'd do a little video where we showed what kind of condition it was in when we got it. So, I'll say what I see. Um, the red's a little bit faded. You can almost kind of see where they sprayed it on. It's a little lighter back here. And on the back box, it's like an orange. And you can kind of see... So, that's a little darker right there. You can kind of see the spray. I don't, I don't, it probably wasn't like that originally. It's probably just faded over the years a little bit. But all in all, it's in pretty good condition. Um, you can see the splatter paint on the large white areas. And on the, uh, Captain Fantastic, it was like a gold splatter paint. That's pretty cool. So if you don't know about that, we've mentioned it in a whole bunch of videos, but basically whenever they did these stencils, they would make the cabinet out of like a cheaper grade plywood instead of a cabinet grade plywood. And so it has flaws all in it. So to play a little trick on your eye, they would paint the whole cabinet one color, white usually, um, and then they would paint this splatter paint all over it with a paint gun with the nozzle turned a certain way where it would just splat paint out. So on this one they did it with gold, and that effect on it kind of hides the imperfections so your eye doesn't catch them. And then they would move it on down the line, and on this particular one it looks like they painted the red next, so they had a big... Uh, uh, stencil they held up to it. I've heard those were like metal. They would hold up to it, spray the red on, and then it'd go down a little farther, and they'd hold another one up and spray the blue on. So, all in all, it's in pretty good shape, I think. It's been around a while. I think this was 76, I believe. Something like that. It has a Texas sticker stuck on the front of it. Uh, it is serial number 3423 and uh, looks like it's in pretty decent shape to me. Now on the play field there is a little guard rail here, a ball rail that's popped up out of place. That's no big deal. Um, the apron looks pretty good. Nice. And the play field itself is in very nice shape. A little bit of trouble there, but all of this is nice, man. And I don't know if his album cover had these characters on it or something. I don't... We might have to go look at that, but you can see the women here. So this was just slightly before I entered the world, but as I understand it, Elton John was in the movie wi uh, the Pinball Wizard, or not the Pinball Wizard, um, uh, Tommy, and uh, was one of the characters in the movie, and then they made, after that, a pinball machine after his next album came out, which was called... Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Um, and so in the back glass he is playing a wizard pinball machine. But that is not exactly set up like the wizard pinball machine that Bally released. Um, it doesn't look anything like it really. And then the, the actual cabinet here is like kind of like it has a grill kind of like off of a car on it and the phone's ringing. Telemarketer. So uh, it says from the end of the world to your town. Okay. Now the back glass on this is kind of notorious. So if you're a delicate person, you may want to turn off the back the, the video now. <laughs> 
Don't say you weren't warned. If there's any children in the room, I'm not going to say anything particularly vulgar, but you may see something particularly vulgar. So the back glass, just done fantastically. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go see who, who drew this back glass. Let me, let me go check that real quick. Okay, so it was done by Dave Christensen, and I have uh, seen him. He did a bunch of great ones, including um, Wizard, which, again, isn't... The back glass of Wizard is different than that. Um, I think he did uh, Matahari and a lot of the kind of famous ones that, that Bally did. They had two or three guys that were doing great art. Um, but it kind of, like I said, it depicts Elton from the movie Tommy, I guess that's how he looked in the movie, but his album was called Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy, and Mr. Christensen drew all kinds of cool stuff on the back glass. So you've got all of these kind of hippies <laughs> at a rock show. So it says, ring them bells, you see the guy with the cigarette, and the girl, and he's kind of, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and this is the early version of the back glass, so not all the stuff is hidden. And so there's that. You've got this guy. I have no clue what he's doing, but the girl is enjoying the show. The champ knows every trick. So they see the little stars there. Some of those, they had extra ones added later that kind of tried to hide some of the stuff, but whenever the guy added them, he didn't really hide anything. He just kind of halfway hid some of the stuff, but you can still tell what's going on. Score more, champ. This girl here. This girl's top heavy. She, she shouldn't be leaning over like that. This girl's bottom heavy. She shouldn't be sitting <laughs> You'll be all right, people. Pinball Lord. Okay. Hmm. I guess that's offensive too to some people. Um. This is just flat out debauchery, people. That says kill, kill. This one says buzz them buzzers, champ. Death, is it beget, begets defeat, I can't remember how that saying goes, we'll come back to that one, this girl's got a little crossbones on her belt, 10th annual Pennessee pinball fantasy ball. Score more, pinball king. She has a flag on her. <laughs> What's up with that? Brutus. Oh yeah, Old Chicago. He he did the uh, back glass for Old Chicago as well. And stuff like that. You know, they didn't really like stuff like that. <laughs> Ring them bells. Alright, so we're going to go back to this one here. Um, oh, where's the... I missed one. Let me look here, let me look here. Oh yeah, this one. I'm, I missed this one. So this girl is flipping you off. So whenever they made the one with the stars, they just took that star right there beside her and they moved it over just slightly to cover her finger. But it, you, know, you can kind of still tell what's going on. So this was the one that uh, they had the biggest problem with. And people, this is not unique to this one back glass. It was kind of a thing where... If you were going to do back glass art, you kind of tried to sneak in as much stuff as you can and just see if the guys in charge would even notice it. So this one. They had a real 
problem with the girl's, you can't see the girl's hand. So they added all these little stars later. Extra stars later to cover a couple things, but it didn't really cover everything. So this version of the back glass appears to be in near perfect shape. And it's the original one that's mirrored. You can see all the reflections and everything. Um, so in very nice shape. Here's the old tax sticker from 78 to 79. Now you would, here in South Carolina, you would need to buy one of these every year. So uh, they may have sold it out of South Carolina or put it into, um, sold it to home use after this, which might explain why it's still in pretty good shape. And here's an older one here from 1977. I'm going to leave those on just because they placed them up out of the way. It did cover up some of the cool art, but um, I think they're kind of cool that it, you know, shows a little bit of the, the local history on it. If the um, owner wants, he can take them off or swap the... Uh, Swap the plastics if he wants. Very cool. Okay, so let me slide the glass out. I'll take the the, the uh, lockdown bar off, and we'll look inside of it and see what kind of mess we're starting with. I almost forgot, people. One of the things we're going to try to start doing on the whenever we start a new series is plugging the thing in when we first get it, just so we can see kind of what the uh, customer must have been seeing. Personally, I usually don't plug them in, I just start working on them. And you might say, why in the world would you do that? It's because on these EMs, I just go through everything. I mess with everything, and when we're done, we should have a working game. Um, you've got a little bit of a chance that whenever you plug something in, especially if you're not familiar with them, that a coil will lock on and burn up. So, I'd rather not do that, but yeah, I can tell if it's going to do it, so... It shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be anything I can't fix if it does do it. All right, it lit right up. Boy, it looks great, too. Maybe the game will start. Let's try it. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I've seen this before. So, one player can play but it still says game over. So it goes into game over when you start. See how the player lights up. I'll bet if I do it quick enough too, I can get the flippers to work. So they're not working. Watch if I hit the start and then hit the flipper real quick. Yep. So just before the game over, flip back off, the flippers can actually work. It's, so it's putting power on the play field, and then it's turning itself back off. So why do you think it's doing that? Hmm? Hmm? Well, we'll try to figure out as we go along. If you watch the whole series, you'll see, because we'll eventually be looking at the schematics, and we'll be able to track it down then. Um, but basically, when you start it, it starts going through the startup. It's trying to reset the score reels but they don't need reset because they're all back to zero and then it kicks back over into game over so that's where we're starting all right so now i'll take the glass off so here's what we find inside of it there's manuals there's fuses uh i might see some change down there yeah i see a quarter a couple quarters there's a pop bumper ring there's a switch stack for a pop bumper. There's a couple burnt up coils that look like chime coils to me. There's another switch stack for a pop bumper. Uh, looking on the play field though, those are all mounted, so that's cool. Uh, there's a flipper body. There's a... That's either an old pinball or the tilt ball. Uh, we've got one of the ones that the coin uh, units have been removed from. So, see this here? It says you have the coin relay here, and this says second coin shoot, this says third coin shoot, 
and that says two coins, three plays. Bally at the time was making little relays that were compartmentalized where you could um, order them a different way, and they would uh, they would install them here and then plug them into one of these plugs, and that, that way they could have different setups that um, they released. So this one. Uh, I, don't, I can't tell if one's been removed. It kind of looks like it. I mean, you get a screw there, and a screw there, screw there, and a screw there, screw there, and a screw there. That's how they mount. But were they ever mounted there? I don't know, maybe not. Those screws could have been pre drilled. Hmm, interesting. I'll show you in the manual what I'm talking about. But it's all very dusty, people. Okay. Um, bottom of the play field. Everything looks pretty good at first glance. But it's a complex one, people. It's got some stuff going on under the play field. Nothing we can't handle, though. Okay, so we're, you know, we're not going to play it. Because it won't play. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the play field out of the machine. The way you do that is turn it off. Uh, and there's just some plugs in the back that plug it into the bottom of the cabinet here. And we'll pull it out and so we can get down there to that board. Went ahead and pulled the play field out. So here's the chart that was down inside of it. You can see what I'm talking about. Coin chute circuits. So it has type 1 door with 3 chutes, type 2 door with 3 chutes, type 3 door with 3 chutes, type 4 door with three chutes, type five door with two chutes, type six door with two chutes. This would be, looks like this door only ever had two chutes, right? So um, it would be either a type five or a type six door with two chutes. Um, and then here's the schematic. So it's got the credit unit step up solenoid is definitely in there. The credit relay is in there. The coin relay is in there. This third coin shoot relay is not in there. But um, I don't, you know, I don't know. This I've never have to mess with this much because we always just put them on free play, and it may work the way it is. This one also says third coin chute relay. And this door that says it has three chutes, you see it uses a third coin chute relay and a second coin chute relay. So what's my point? My whole point is, I think there's a relay or two missing right here. But it'll probably work without it. It has something to do with these adjustments here. It's how it makes it where this coin shoot takes a dime, and this one takes a quarter, and maybe this one takes a nickel or something. You know, it's just how they're able to do all of that. Our little Texas thing is just a magnet. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah. So the next thing is, let's get all of the stuff out of there that's laying loose, and vacuum the inside of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to lift up this board out of the bottom so that we can get down to this mech board and start working on it. So uh, the way you do that is there's four big bolts on the sides here. All right. And uh, you have to take those loose. You can unplug the bottom board from here. By the way, I, I unplugged it again because we don't want to... We're nowhere near it working yet. So we... Um, so we, we uh, that's interesting, we'll have to look at that. We're nowhere near it working yet, so we, uh, we don't have to, uh, what have they done? We don't have to keep power on it for any reason at all, since we're going to clean everything. Yeah, so this isn't going to completely remove, because they use black tape on a wire, because they burnt one of the plugs out of the Jones plug. But sometimes there's an extra one. But not this time. Hmm. I'll put some kind of little connector on that or something so it can be removed. I don't know if I've got a one. 
Hmm. We may have to leave it taped, but either way, I'm going to pull this up out of here. We'll tape it back. Basically, there's a wire that runs in one of the fuses that gets burnt up a lot. So uh, it must have burnt up on that plug. And so they just cut the two wires and taped them together so that you didn't have the resistance of the, the Jones plug in it. It's the 6 amp, which is the light bulbs, that the illumination light bulbs. I think it's the one for the back box. Ah, it's typical. The last one we worked on, the... Um, was it the Knight Rider? One of the last ones we worked on had something similar going on. Alright, so I'm going to lift all that out of here. I'm going to get all this trash out of here. I'm going to vacuum the hole inside and we'll see what it looks like then. Okay, so it cleaned up pretty good. The panel cleaned up a little bit. Got a lot of the dust gone. So here's those three things. Can we tell if one was ever mounted there? I don't know. I'm starting to think maybe they weren't. Look at uh, when they do mount on there, they go over the paper. Um, I don't know. I think maybe they were never mounted in there. Okay. Alright, so uh, I'm trying to think if I saw anything interesting. Oh yeah, I saved something for you. I saved something for you. Look at this. See the solder on the wires there? That's because this lays down in the bottom, so if you're working on something on the bottom of the playfield, solder will drip down. So it was about right here on the right side. So it would be something around here. Probably not the flippers. Maybe this. Something they were working on there. They were dripping some solder down. I do it too from time to time. Unfortunately, it happens. But the problem with that is, is if the stuff's hot enough, it can burn through the wires. And then short stuff out, right? So if you do have a solder splash, you need to clean it up a little bit. And then look at this. This is much worse. So this is the credit relay. See how dirty it is. But see the solder there? That they dropped on it from above. But look, it's touching this blade. But it's not quite touching this blade. But if it was to touch both blades, it would permanently be shorted together. And it might take you forever to figure out why. it is in there. There we go. But you can still see like there's still a lot of dirt and dust in there. What you can do if you're doing one for your house and you've got plenty of time and you're not paying me to do it so you're not, you know, you want it done all the way live, here's what you can do. You can very carefully take every single thing off of this board. And then you can take all of this stuff and put it in your dishwasher. Yeah, I said it. And then you can cut brand new boards. Because look, this is just little, what, half inch plywood? You can cut an all new board. And then you can paint it purple. And then you can put all the stuff back on here. You can even get these. A lot of places online have scans of these. Uh, papers if you want to you can put brand new ones on it and then you can put your nice perfectly clean stuff back on it if you don't do that it's really hard to get through there you can use like a vacuum with like a brush attachment and just keep working it and working it but it takes quite a while people so we've got it about as far as I can go 
if you've ever seen Oklahoma. We've gone about as far as I can go on cleaning that board. Okay, so uh, let's see, let me show you what was in it. So underneath the whole thing was this key, and it's one of those security keys. Do not duplicate. Well, now that you folks have a good high def picture of this, some of you locksmiths will probably duplicate it, but you know, we have no clue what the key goes to. Okay, the manufacturer's certificate, number 3423. <coughs> Excuse me. There are two fried, I would guess those are chime coils. And I would be correct. So there's CJ 31-2000s. This says, come on, 31-2000. Come on, 31-2000. I don't know, people. I'm not so sure those are the right chime coils they replaced it with. They may be, or they may not be. We'll have to figure it out. Okay. Somebody's big hunking screwdriver. Look, the, the <laughs> you don't see one like that too often. These are for pot bumpers. And actually, well, I was going to say they're new, but they may be. I don't know. So there's one there. And this is the other. This is from another type, actually. Okay. The tilt bob, which they have completely removed. Might put that back on. This is not a pinball, actually. This is the tilt ball. So when you pick up the front of the machine, that goes down and hits that switch and makes it tilt. This is an extra flipper shaft. And if you look... I don't think it's ever been used. There's a set screw that holds it in place on that turned part of the shaft there, and I don't see any set screw. Um, I don't see any set screw uh, damage or whatever. Okay, here's another one. Same with it. It's a brand new flipper shoe. This is part of the lock for the back door. This is a metal cover that goes on the coin switch. See that? So this one goes on that one. We're finding all of its secrets. So far, we're putting it all back. This is a pop bunk ring. You can tell on these two if they're used. There will be wear on them. I'd say that's a brand new one. Uh, various assorted screws. There's a whole bunch of these little C-clips. These are probably off of the drop targets. There's some little posts in there. And then these clips, like, that's one right there. These clips hold the drop targets in place. We'll check that out whenever we get to it. Uh, these little things hold the uh, plastics on. Okay, and then there is an out of order sign. Out of order, sorry. But they didn't date it, because who would? And then a different out of order, sorry. This is when they're very stern. This is when they're truly sorry. And then it also says, Four six four 
zero five, I believe. Now I wonder if that has anything to do with the coin meter. Four six four zero five. Nope, it couldn't, because that coin meter is not even up to that yet. Um, I don't know if that coin meter is even original either, because they added a wire with a diode. We'll look at that later. But old school, out of order sign on it. It's pretty cool. And then there are three quarters. One says 1980. One says 1983, no, 1985, and one says 1983. Now, people get all excited about that. They go, man, there was a quarter from 1983 in there. There's one of the original quarters from back in the day. Somebody dropped in there in 1983. Well, not really, people. I mean, I got quarters, well, if I had quarters in my pocket, they would be old, right? It's not uncommon to find old quarters in circulation. They could have dropped that in there, you know, a couple weeks ago before they dropped a pinball machine off to us. So that doesn't really mean too much. But it's kind of neat. I understand. Here's the paperwork for the coin doors that we were looking at. Here is the complete schematics, which by this time, believe me, they were long. About seven feet long, people. Something like that, six feet long. Got those, that's good. And uh, this here is like some of the uh, instruction cards and uh, high score sheets. And then, of course, the manual. Bally, Captain Fantastic. Tells you the installation. General game operation. It tells you the startup sequence, which is invaluable. So it's literally telling you what order the things work in uh, and what happens when the ball goes into the out hole. Parts list, panel adjustments. Here's another insert of the coin door. Uh, that shows extra coin shoot relays in it that don't appear to have ever been in this one. Shows you how to do a couple of adjustments. The flippers. Service hints. Um, adjustment instructions for credits desired. So, you know, they were running into a problem where they were trying to get to where they could charge more for a game and they had to be kind of unique with see for a while it was if the game was a nickel well you could have a coin door with a nickel a dime and a, a quarter and that was real easy to keep track of but what do you do if you want it to be like two plays for a quarter like this one says right now how do people put dimes in they have to put a quarter in and then it gets kind of so if they have to put a quarter in why do you have two coin shoots and if you put a third coin shoot in, what's it do? It just, you know, it got more complex. All right, so there we are, people. So, I think what we'll do <laughs> is uh, we'll look in the back box and see what kind of shape it's in. And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to see who's outside hollering. What in the world? What in the world? So here is the back box. Got the little metal door over there. The bottom board, the mech board that we're about to mess with, plugs in here. Okay. Got your traditional 16 reels, four for each player. But we keep working on these big old four players, don't we? Um, just like everything we've been working on lately, we've been doing bally after bally after bally. 10 point relay, 100 point relay, 1000 point relay. Number one score reset, number two score reset. Now, on the last one we did, the number one score reset reset the, these two score reels on each one. And the number two score reset reset these two score reels on each one. So it's probably something similar to that. 
not really that important though. You can figure it out with the schematics. Uh, we have the player up unit here. Usually it doesn't give you too much trouble once you clean it. And then we have the credit unit, unit here, uh, which it looks like, I don't know what's going on here. We've got a wire that's been disconnected. What that could be, yeah. So what they've done to put this one on free play is there's different ways to do it. What they've done is they've removed the wire from the subtract coil. So what that means is when this goes up, it adds credits. It's maxed out right now. And when this one goes in, it subtracts credits. On the front, right? So what they've done is they've made it where you can win credits, but it's electrically impossible for you to subtract credits. <laughs> so it, this, this uh, coil can never come in and subtract a game. So when the game starts, it tells it to subtract a game on this wire but it doesn't work because it's disconnected. So it never charges you a credit. Therefore, it's always on free play. So that's that. This is the knocker up here. Okay. These are the one, two, three, and four player 100,000 coils, or so solenoids. Whenever that comes in, right, it's going to light up a light here on the front uh, that tells you that you got a hundred thousand points. There'll be a hundred thousand point light lit up in there somewhere hidden probably up here or somewhere. They could put one down here and over there uh, because you, you can only go up to 99,990 points. So if you get another 10 points you're up to a hundred thousand and to display that, they light up the light. So if I'm looking here, it looks like it's probably... <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? On this one, they may have them all together, maybe. Where have they hid you, 100,000 point light? Hmm. That's the one that says two up. These are the general illumination ones. It's going to be one with its own wire. And it should be somewhere near the scores. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure, but we'll figure it out. Whenever we start it up. So somewhere there will be a light that lights up for 100,000 points on each player. This one, it's there's all the ones for the score reel. There's all the ones for the bottom. Hmm. Maybe that one. Who knows? All right, but everything back here looks good. This is the match unit. It's just a little simple stepper. I guess they call it the 0 to 90 unit on these. But it's just a really simple plunger that comes in and makes a little wheel in there spin around that you can't see right now because it's too dark. So it'll be the same thing, just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Everything looks complete though. We do have a hairpin C-clip there. Who knows what that goes to. And then this, like a really, it's a piece of a coat hanger actually. Hmm, which one of you little punk kids was trying to get free games with a coat hanger? Ah, uh, you know that's what was going on. They had a coat hanger they were probably putting over the back door down in here. And if they, if they really knew their stuff, they could probably get it down in here and touch that switch or something. <laughs> All right, so there it is. So uh, it's a nice, clean example, I think. We got a nice starting point. And uh, keep in mind, what it's doing right now is that it starts and then it... Uh, immediately goes the game over. So that's what we're going to try to track down and figure out how to fix. All right, folks, that's where we're starting. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about this particular machine. I think it's done a pretty good job of surviving. Now we need to do our job and fix it. So join us next time. Now, I believe we're going to upload this in the fantastic month of December. 
And this year in December, we're going to be running game. We're going to be running videos every day. We're going to try to put up a video every day for the whole month of December. So if this is in December and we hit our mark like we thought we were, uh, you will be seeing the next video tomorrow. So stay tuned and we'll see you tomorrow where we'll keep working through it. Uh, we film these in advance, but we try to schedule them ahead of time and that way we make sure that we always have a video for you. And uh, so the next installment will be soon. So we appreciate everybody watching. This one's going to be really fun to work on. And if you don't know, like if we, we, we do have a lot of viewers that are not really big pinball people. They just like watching this because uh, they think it's interesting how the things work and how the, uh, the designers made them back in the day. And it's cool. And also a lot of it is not lost on me how similar these are to computers. They're just very primitive computers. You'll see that as we go through it. But uh, if you're not that familiar with pinball machines, or maybe you're a little younger, you weren't around back then, this is widely considered one of the best electromechanical pinball machines. There are newer ones that people really like, but as far as the solid, the uh, electromechanical games, this is one of the tip-top games, people. It's got a great theme, it's stuck in the 70s, and it, it plays cool. So this, this is considered one of the better ones, so uh, make sure to stay tuned through the whole series and we'll play it at the end. So I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, leave us some comments down below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. And thank you to everybody that's been using our Amazon links. Do you know about that? There's a link down below to Amazon. If you decide to buy anything at Amazon, like Christmas presents, for instance, or anything at all, if you click our link to go to Amazon, it's like we sent you there. So they give us a tip. And they give, it's about 3% of whatever you spend. So that adds up, people. So, uh, Tons of people have been doing that lately. We really appreciate it. We see you out there. But there's always room for more. So if other people want to do it too, we won't complain. Uh, don't go buy anything you wouldn't normally though. We don't want you to spend extra money on us. Uh, but if you're going to spend it anyway, why not, right? So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And uh, <laughs> we uh, uh, would also like to invite you to check out my brother Donnie. Now, if you don't know about my brother Donnie, that's literally my brother Donnie. And if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you would probably enjoy watching us uh, work on old buildings. He and I have a couple buildings that we've bought in a small town near here, and we're trying to fix them up to help revitalize the town. So uh, go check that out, and we will see you on the next video where we're going to jump right into the electronics on this one. So see you next time.